Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Matthew Maley from MatthewMaley.com. Well, it is official. The NFL season has come to an end. At least the regular season. So now it's time for the big dance. Everybody who's in starts clean. Everybody who's not, well, start figuring out your draft order and wish that you were in the first pick to get Andrew Luck. <laughs> so, wanted to do a... Uh, recap of all of the week 17 action as well as a little bit of a playoff intro if you will a little teaser as to what's going to be going on um awesome day of football um anytime that you can have the first day of the year have football on it pro football not just you know the bowl games which are already on the first it's a good day so uh ended up having a great day of football a little sad there wasn't a monday night game but Whatever, it's all good. There was a nice full day on, on Sunday, so it was cool. I was uh, able to watch some of those games um, and literally start my year off right with that. So definitely some, some solid games and uh, got all the playoff picture somewhat set up. By the end of the night, the, all the playoff picture was good to go. But uh, definitely some teams that backed into the playoffs and uh, – some teams that really better get their heads screwed on straight or else they ain't going to be in the playoffs for very long. So, Broncos, Cincinnati, looking at y'all. But anyway, first off, we'll talk about my teams. First off, while we're talking about Cincinnati, the uh, Ravens actually beat Cincinnati, yet Cincinnati still made the playoffs thanks to a whole bunch of tiebreakers and wild card, whatever. But uh, sadly, I didn't get to watch the Ravens game. It was an early game. But um, from what I saw of the highlights... T. Sizzle, murdering fools. Um, I think he got two more forced fumbles, a sack. Like, I mean, he was just killing it, um, absolutely killing it. Um, so they ended up winning. I believe the final score was, what, 20, 20 uh, yeah, 24 to 16. So good game um, overall. Really, the, the Ravens did what they needed to do. They won. So uh, sadly, since New England won, um, the Ravens only can walk up the second seed, but whatever. Got the second seed, got that first round by, so huge. That was absolutely huge. Um, Would have been nicer to get that first seed, so you don't have to go through Foxborough. But at the end of the day, I'm you know definitely happy with the number two seed. So solid, solid game by the Ravens against a, a game opponent, honestly. The Bengals, that, that conference... No matter how bad or good either, any team in that conference is doing, they can win at any time. It's just like the University of Michigan versus Ohio State. That rivalry at any given day, whether a team's you know hasn't won a game or the team is, hasn't lost a game, when those two teams mash up, they can always anything can happen. Same thing with this with this division, whether it's the Steelers, the Browns going you know or the Browns going against the Ravens or the Bengals, anything can happen. Plus, the Bengals have actually had a decent season this year. Um, they've been rather unsung um, because you have the Steelers and the Ravens in that division doing so well. But um, they actually have, have kind of crept their way thanks to the Red Rocket, Andy Dalton, and uh, who really has been very impressive. I wasn't expecting this. And A.J. Green, who I was more expecting. I liked A.J. Green when he was in school. I really thought he was a good player. So the, the fact that two rookies are really carrying the Bengals is pretty impressive. So they ended up um, getting the six seed um, overall. So you've got three teams from one, you know, division all in the playoffs, which is pretty impressive. Um, which is really impressive, honestly. So Ravens get their win means they get to chillax that first week and uh, don't have to do anything but watch who they're going to have to be playing. Then we go to the Cardinals. Um, and thankfully, I was able to watch most of this game, actually. So, Cardinals um, ended up uh, going against the Seahawks. Um, really was a pretty good game. Um, they originally were up. Then, at the end, had to tie. They had to kick a field goal to tie the game. So, I uh, ended up going into overtime. And uh, really was, was just back and forth, back and forth. We really missed Beanie Wells. Um... Beanie was still injured, so there were a few plays that really would have helped having Beanie in there. A couple third downs that really would have been nice. But all I have to say is for anybody who lost faith in Larry Fitzgerald, and there were a lot of people, there were a lot of people who, be, ever since, really ever since Kurt Warner left, who have been not talking down about Larry Fitzgerald, but definitely haven't been 
I don't know, they haven't been been on him as much, if you will. And I understand that. I mean, not having, you know, Kurt Warner there is a big deal. And he did fall off a little bit simply because he didn't have anybody to throw to him. Um, and when Cobb first got here, they didn't have a whole lot of uh, rapport. Um, then Skelton comes in, and they still don't have a whole lot. But after this past week, nobody can say anything about Fitzy. Apparently, he got crushed in the third quarter. Maybe it was the end of the second. And was coughing up blood on the sideline. Like... Not just a little, like, oh, I busted my mouth, like, from his lungs or something, to where he's straight coughing up blood, yet still not only continued the game, mind you, a game that means nothing, a game that does absolutely nothing for us except actually give us a worse draft position, a game that doesn't benefit us in any way, and that shows you how much of a gamer and a baller this guy really is. Shout out to G DJ Steve Porter for doing that little Tebow song. You should have made it about Fitzy, because he's a beast. Unleash, as Skip Bayless would say. But seriously, like, absolutely a beast. He ended up, I want to get the exact numbers right here. He ended up with, oh, come on, computer. Don't be like that. He ended up with nine catches. Um, uh, wow, it just died. Guess I won't be pulling up the exacts. Um, ended up with nine catches, I believe. I think it was like 159 yards and a touchdown. And it's a couple of the catches that he made. He made a catch in overtime that was one of the nicest catches I've seen all year. To the point that I tweeted it to Sports Center that it better have made the top ten. And of course they didn't do a top ten. I don't know why. But he it was a one-handed catch where he snares the ball and then is able to roll enough. To when he lands, he lands on his back and shoulder, so that there's no you know issue as to if he secured the ball or if the you know ball if the ground helped him, if you will. So amazing catch, absolutely amazing catch. I mean, he he's a beast, flat out, point blank. Period. Fitzgerald is one of the best receivers in the game, and if we can get him lined up with a better quarterback, we'll see what happens with Kevin Cobb. I still have faith in that. I'm not one. I know a lot of people have already lost faith in that. I still have some. Plus, I like Skelton. But if we can get him with a, a good quarterback, he is a he will be a shoe-in Hall of Famer. Honestly, a shoe-in, in my opinion. So, ended up Feely kicking a nice um, eh, overtime field goal, so we get the win. And uh, it was a, it was just a good game. It was a really exciting game. So, I uh, was able to watch that while still laying in my Venetian bed. So. I'm sure the neighbors, uh, the rooms around it, loved hearing me screaming about, First down! Come on, Fitzy! <laughs> but what can I say? I get into my games. So, definitely was really happy with that. Both my teams won. Um, and overall, it was, it was definitely solid with that. There were a couple other games I wanted to touch on. First off, um, being the Jets, they ended up losing to Miami and really just looked horrible. And I, I really thought the Jets were going to be a solid team. I um, didn't pick them to win the Super Bowl, but I did pick them getting to the championship game. Um, so I was very surprised when not only did they come out and look just bad the last few weeks, but against Miami, they looked like they didn't even care to be there, to be quite honest. And I know Miami's been picking it up I, out of nowhere after starting off the season looking horrible. They really picked it up and really put together a decent season. Well, a decent end. Um, I think it's also partly because Jason Taylor was retiring, so they wanted to send him out on a good note. But shout out to Jason Taylor. Dude was an absolute beast. Um, I never really liked him as a you know because he was always on teams I didn't like, but can't can't hate on the dude. He's an absolute class act and, and a great player. So shout out to him. Enjoy retirement, homie. But I was just amazed with how much Rex Ryan lost control of that team. And he even said it. He's like, I lost the the pulse of this team. But when you've got one of your captains either taking himself out of the game or being taken out of the game, and you don't know which one it is, quote-unquote, I was just amazed by that. And even though I think he did, and even though I think that he probably had something to do with it, the I don't know, it, it, as a captain and in San Antonio Holmes, I know he's had some issues in the past, but for the most part, he's been pretty squeaky clean lately, enough that he was, a cap, that he was appointed a captain. How is it that you are that disconnected with your team to where you don't even care if you win and you're a captain. Like, I don't know. 
I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, so I'm not going to assign blame one way or the other, but I'm just very surprised by that um, from both sides, honestly. Another game that has to be discussed because it was discussed ing God, that was corny. If I didn't hate reshooting videos, I'd reshoot that because that was really corny. Oh, sorry about that, guys. But uh, I was speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Denver Broncos game, which... I think was about as exciting to watch as going to the dentist while watching paint dry. Yeah. Everybody's up on Tim Tebow and, uh, oh, Mr. Tebow. That was horrible. Of course, the week when they needed you most, where were you being unleashed? All he does is win. More like all he does is complete, like, three passes for, like, 30 yards. The one week that your team needs you the most, you shrivel up with that. And I understand that Kansas City followed the perfect way to defeat you. But in the same sense, if you only have one way that you can win and you get defeated by the Kansas City Chiefs, who I know were playing to try and give Romeo, Romeo Cornell the job, I get that. I understand they had some intensity behind it. But if you don't have enough intensity when you're playing for for to win your division... We got a problem. And I love the fact that afterwards Champ Bailey called it out. Not just, you know, him, but the whole team and said, there's no way we're going to do anything in the playoffs if we don't get something together, which is true. And I, I, I absolutely love Champ Bailey. I think he's a great player, but it's totally true. What are you going to do? Honestly, if that if that's what you're putting out there. And still, Willis McGahee, I think, had like 139, 159 yards. We had a good game. But when your quarterback is... I really believe that he was hurting the team. He was inhibiting your ability to score as opposed to assisting. That's a problem. And I, I don't dislike or like Tim Tebow. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of him. But in terms of a player, I don't dislike him or like him, really. But I'm curious to see what they're going to end up doing in Denver because I don't see how they can... How can you plan a future with a guy like this? I mean, short of him stealing Peyton Manning's mojo in the offseason and injecting himself with it. I don't see how you can ever depend on this guy leading your franchise. And who knows? He could come around this coming week and destroy Pittsburgh and we're all going to be back on the... Well, I'm not going to be back on the bandwagon, but we'll all be saying, hey, he can be a quarterback. And that's really all it would take. All it would take is him having a, you know... 17 for 25 passing game, getting 250 yards and a couple touchdowns and beating Pittsburgh, and that would do it. Um, little off story I wanted to touch on, um, probably because I really think he's a, a cool guy from what I've seen of him. Um, but Ryan Clark, the starting safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, as you guys may or may not know, is currently having talks with his doctor to see if he'll be able to travel to Denver. Um, the past two times that Pittsburgh has played in Denver, he has not played because he has a sickle trait within his blood. Um, I don't think it's exactly sickle cell anemia. I think it's something different than that. But it's a similar sickle trait to where when he did play um, back in 2007, he got incredibly ill because of the elevation to the point that he had to have his spleen and gallbladder removed, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So they're trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be possible. If technically that was the worst case scenario and since it already happened, maybe he could play. Or if there's a potential to do even more life-threatening damage to him. Um, at which point, obviously, I mean, I pray he wouldn't play. Because he's a great player. Um, and while I know he would love to go out there and help his team, at the end of the day, I really think that the Broncos are going to lose regardless of if he plays or not. So is it really you know worth risking your life and who knows what else? So your career, your life for the sake of your family, whatever. So just something I wanted to touch on there. Um, I'm sure if the doctors do clear him, I'm sure he'll be out there and playing because that guy's a tough dude. But uh, definitely something I wanted to touch on. So there were some crazy games this week. Um, another game that I just got to touch on was the Detroit versus Green Bay game, which had over 1,000 passing yards and 11 touchdowns. That's crazy. Like, nuts. The fact that... Aaron Rodgers had nothing to do with the game, was even more nuts. The fact that they had Matt Flynn in, 
in the game, the backup quarterback for Green Bay, and he did something that Staubach didn't do, that Favre didn't do, that Rodgers didn't do, and that's throw six touchdown passes. First time in Packers history. It's done. By a guy who played one game this season. <laughs> and he did it at the perfect time because he's actually going to be a free agent this next year. So what a perfect time to showcase your skills, right? So uh, congratulations to him. I was I was definitely hoping that the Packers were going to lose. But um, good job to them ending the season 15-1. and one. That's pretty impressive. Definitely curious to see what's going to happen in the playoffs. Um, I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl. And honestly, I don't even know if they're going to make it to the championship game. Personally, I just have this feeling. I don't know what the feeling is, but I just have this feeling they're going to lose. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if I'm right or not. So I uh, sadly didn't get a chance to bet any of the games, which honestly, I still ended up pulling 11 games out of out of them right. But the last week, the first week and the last week are always the two scariest weeks to bet football because you never know, no matter what a team does in preseason, you don't know what they're going to do first week. With the very, very rare exception, there's usually four or five teams that you know are going to be good. Other than that, it's all up in the air. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, the last week, you never know what's going to happen just based on who's going to be sitting, who's going to be playing for what. Like, I personally thought that the Saints were going to lose. I didn't pick them to lose, but I did feel that they were going to lose. Yet, they come out and drop 40-something points. I thought the Falcons might lose, might there. They dropped 42 points in the first half. Honestly, I thought that the Bucks would be playing to save Raheem Morris's job. Guess not. So, you know, it's always tough. So I actually, I was pissed that I didn't get to bet any of the games because I actually uh, was out too late and didn't wake up too early. Um, but now I'm all right with it, to be quite honest. I'm, now after seeing what happened, I'm okay with it. So uh, sadly, though, since I only got 11 games correct and the guy who was one ahead of me actually got 12 of the games correct in the pickums. I ended up being you know, tied for second place um, with the 100 and I think 150 right, 160 right. No, yeah, 160 right, and he had 162. I think I, I don't know. I could be off on the number. Who cares? I didn't win, so it sucks. The guy who actually won the championship is also the guy who won that, and he's a uh, well, he's just who he is. I won't say anything mean about him. He's kind of annoying, but <laughs> it's all good. That's what you're supposed to be in fantasy football. Everybody goes at each other. He definitely does. So uh, shout out to him. Kills me to say it, but it's all my fault, honestly. I had a five-game lead, and thanks to no Wi-Fi, I ended up only able to get in four games that the one week. Ended up winning all four of those games, but that's what killed me. So on a week when everybody else got ten wins right, I only got four, and... Uh, that's when the plane crashed. So it sucks, honestly, but it is what it is at the end of the day. But overall, still a great regular season of football. I would have got to say this has been one of the better seasons um, in memory. Um, lots of craziness happening. Lots of, you know, little intrigue and storylines going off from the Lions starting off the ceiling so well, from the Packers going undefeated to, I mean, teams that were just sucking the Colts, you know, going 0 for what? I think they went 0 for 12, 0 and 13. The whole suck for luck movement. Um, teams that were able to turn it around at the end, like the Cardinals. Um, and it definitely gets some, some excitement ready for 2012 when you look at teams like the Eagles, like the teams like the Cardinals, who I think are just poised to just blow up, I hope. So you're hearing it here first. Cardinals 2012. I'm saying it now. We're going to challenge San Francisco for the, for the division. Let's hope at least. There's another team, San Francisco. Shows what Mr. Harbaugh can do. Shout out to him. So, on that note, I'll wrap up this video. But I uh, wanted to do recap for Week 17. So let me know what you guys think. Hopefully your teams are in the playoffs. Hit me up. Let me know who your teams are. Let me know uh, what you think in terms of Super Bowl winning, Super Bowl picks, all that. Um, I will probably do a like pre so, uh, opening weekend of, of the Super Bowl, I mean, I'm sorry, pre-opening playoff weekend video where I will do my final picks for uh, the playoffs. I haven't had a chance to really think about it yet, so I don't want to throw it on here without thinking about it. But uh, I'm going to do that before uh, the game's on Saturday, and then we'll go from there. 
So, once again, Matthew Maley from MatthewMaley.com, Week 17, NFL, and, well, I can't really say fantasy, recap. Um, so, there you go. So, once, once again, thank you, as always, for checking out my videos. Got a bunch of new followers up on Twitter and some new subscribers to the, uh, to the YouTube channel. Um, so, over the New Year's break, I guess. So, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Have a look around. Hopefully, you like a lot of my videos. And, uh, of course, you can always get a hold of me on MatthewMaley.com. Um, that is the website, and that's where everything's listed. Um, if you'd like, you can leave me a message on there on the discussion tab. And while you're at it, check out some more of my videos. Um, just scroll down through the video blog page, and you've got all of them listed. As well, um, you can look at everything up on YouTube itself. Um, look, look for Matthew Maley Poker. Search for that, and you'll get all 210 of my videos. Um, as well, while you're there, subscribe to the channel so you'll be first to know when everything pops up. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay between when they go up on YouTube and when they get up onto the website because GoDaddy isn't exactly the easiest program to use to set up a website. So there's a little bit of a delay. So if you want to be the first to see the new videos, subscribe up on YouTube as well. You can like the pages up there and uh, I appreciate that. Maybe throw me a couple comments or something. I've been getting a lot of good comments, so thank you for that. As well, um, follow your boy on Twitter at Matthew Maley. I'm always posting up on there constantly. And then, of course, like my page up on Facebook. Search for Matthew Maley Poker again. And uh, it's everything you need. So it's all the info in case you want to get a hold of me. And uh, till the next video, signing off. Peace out, y'all.